programming is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with CoachChick.com want to work with uh, the young guns and mid guns or some of the younger players on their arm movement. So the some, somewhat controversial in terms of performance skating versus power skating is arm movement. Very clearly uh, high performance players, both male and female, move their arms side to side. So we need to get that movement with the players. And one of the drills that there is very successful with us, I call it arm skating. I've also heard referred to as flat skating. So the drill looks like this. Go for it. That's it. Push, push your arms. Move your arms more, Graham. Push your arms more. Try to go as fast as you can by moving your arms. You got the shot. Now same thing going back. That's it. Keep your knees bent. That's another good coaching point. So let's switch now and have Alex and Kellen. Now these guys, that wasn't a problem. With Alex and Kellen, it's maybe a little bit more of a challenge. So do you guys understand what to do? Two hands on your stick and move your arms as much as you can. Okay, go for it. That's it. Push, push. That's it, Kellen. That's really good, Kellen. And and Alex, that's nice. I love that. Good. Keep going. Push, push, push. Take a shot. Take a shot. That's it. Good work, you guys. Good work. Okay, move your arms side to side. Move your arms side to side. Show me. Show me. Show me. That's it. Do you have an expertise that would help our hockey viewers? If so, how about telling Dennis about that at coachchickhockey at gmail.com. My name is Shawnee Harley. I'm a two-time Olympian and mental toughness coach. I posted a video for athletes about the difference between goals and values. Goals are what we do. Values are who we are. Athletes have a really tough time separating those two things. This is a follow-up video because I have the exact same question for parents and coaches. What are your values? Have you forgotten your why? Why did you sign up to coach in the first place? Why did you sign your child up for this sport in the first place? My guess is the reason that you did it would be a reflection of your values. So my challenge is when you show up, are you showing up with your values? Yelling, screaming, criticizing, hissy fits, lecturing, directing, punishing, arguing. Is that what you value? Sport builds character. It also reveals it. Your character gets revealed every single time you show up. And not only that, your athlete, your child is watching. Time to bring your greatest self. Time to remember your why. It's time to show up with your values. You need some help with that? There's my website. Wives tail alert. That's right. If you're following non-scientific coaches for advice, you're most likely perpetuating the problem. for the 12 
best exercises to go ahead and get started with when you're first implementing a resistance band program, I'm going to bring them to you right now. All right, so let's get ready to go. You know, first one we want to do is we want to train our trunk, and there's two exercises I think you need to go ahead and get started with. First one is a simple plank. You want to take the band. You got two options. Put it on your back, doubled, or my suggestion is start out with it singled by putting it around this way, hook it onto your hand, put it right on the small of your back, drop on down, and hold that plank right there. Keep the pressure against the palms of your hands, and you got a plank. Very easy exercise to get started with. From there, we want to add a little bit of mobility. So we're going to go into a mountain climber. Keep your belly button tight and go into a simple mountain climber as your second exercise for your trunk. From there, let's move on to now hitting our back. What we're going to do is we're going to drop down. We're going to stay on the floor for this one. We're going to hook it around our feet. Now make sure you've got your feet separated apart. Hands go through the loops so you can pull with your mid back. We're going to go into what we call seated rows. Now, a couple things. Keep those feet apart. Push against the band to engage your glutes. So now as you're pulling, your glutes are engaged and you can keep a nice upward posture. We don't want any slouching. We don't want any leaning back. From there, we're going to go ahead. We're going to come up into a standing position. We're going to put the band behind us. But now we're going to move it up into our shoulder blade area. You can see I've got it up onto my scapula. I'm going to take my hand through the loop and hook it onto the index finger between my index finger and thumb. Through the loop, index finger and thumb. Why? Because I'm going to go into chest presses and I want resistance through the full range of motion. So I'm going to knock it out going through the full range of motion. From there we're going to drop down. We're going to step on it with one foot. We'll go with our left foot. We're going to step through and we're going to put it up into this position with our hands shoulder width apart so we can go ahead and do an incline chest press. Notice I keep the band apart, my hands apart, the band is not rubbing on my arms, and I'm really engaging my mid back right along with my anterior shoulder girdle. From there I'm just going to step out of it, I'm going to go into a pull apart. Two ways you can do this, you can stagger yourself and go single pull apart, make sure the band is about 12 inches between your hand, maybe 18 at the most, grip it a little bit, but most importantly if you keep tension on the band, you will be able to pull it apart without any issues of the band sliding. What we don't want is the band getting loose, so always keep a little tension on it. If you want more challenge, you take it out, you wrap it around one hand, wrap it around the other, you're now about 12 inches apart and you can do a pull apart with a double resistance, all right? So from there, we're gonna go ahead, that's pull parts. Now we're gonna drop down into our shoulder press and we're gonna go right here. Again, shoulder width apart with my hands, up and apart. Get those hands apart a little bit. That'll engage your scapula and also allow you to go ahead, clear your shoulder girdle so we don't get that impingement issue into the shoulder. From there, let's move right into high pulls. Once again, Shoulder width apart, pull up and pull apart. Why do I pull apart? To engage my shoulder blades. So it's a simple pull apart. Make sure, lead with your elbows. Bring your elbows up first. That's the cue to getting that exercise going. From there, we're just gonna slide down, hook our thumbs through the band, fingers over top, pull the band apart a little bit, and you're going hammer curl. Now most people get in here with them. Don't go in there. Keep them shoulder width apart, Hammer curl. Notice, knees are bent, hips are bent, and we're in a great athletic position, and we're just using the shoulder and the bicep to go ahead and engage the hammer curl. From there, we're going right into triceps. Couple things you can do, but most the way you can grip it, put your fingers through the band now, not your thumbs, bring it up to the shoulder. Set it on the shoulder when you're ready to go. It's just simply right there pressing through. That is how you're gonna go ahead and do a tricep press. So we got core, we got back, we got chest, we got shoulders, we got arms. Let's finish with legs. You know where I'm going here. We're going front squat. Put that band up onto your shoulders, elbows up, front squat. All the way down, all the way up. 
knocking out that exercise just like that. Now I'm gonna keep it right there because I'm just gonna step out and right into a split squat. So now I can knock out a split squat on my right, but here's the deal. When you switch it up, just step in with your left, step out with your right. You don't have to change it. Band goes out in front and you're split squatting left. Transitions are huge. Make sure you practice them and work on them. Guys, there's your 12 exercises that you should go ahead and get started with when you're implementing a resistance band training strength conditioning program. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hockey Nutrition with Kim. I'm Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. And if you've ever wondered how in the world can you make a high protein smoothie for your youth ice hockey player without using protein powder, I'm going to show you how today. You want to start with a liquid. It could be cow's milk, almond milk, coconut milk, soy milk, or oat milk. Now, these milks were very in protein content ranging from eight grams for cow's milk down to one gram for coconut or almond milk. This is gonna depend on your skater's choice and whether or not they are vegetarian or perhaps lactose intolerant. Then add some fruit. Bananas, strawberries, and blueberries top the list for the majority of my youth ice hockey players. Fruits don't contain a lot of protein, but they do add wonderful nutrients for your skater's growing body, like potassium, vitamin A, vitamin C, folate, and dietary fiber. Next, you wanna add some healthy fat. That's gonna give a punch with some calories that are much needed for the youth ice hockey player. Avocados, peanut butter, almond butter, sun butter, chia seeds, and flax seeds are all great to add. Now noting, don't add any that your skater is allergic to. Avocados, will provide 2.9 grams of protein for one cup of sliced. Peanut butter packs a punch with eight grams of protein in two tablespoons, almond butter, 6.8 grams of protein in two tablespoons, and sun butter, 5.6 grams of protein in two tablespoons. If you don't know what sun butter is, that's made from sunflower seeds. Chia seeds are 4.7 grams in one tablespoon, and in one tablespoon of ground flax seeds, you get 1.8 grams. So any one of these would be a great addition or you could add several. I personally like to add peanut butter and flax seeds or almond butter and flax seeds to my smoothies. Vegetables can be kale and spinach. Now, surprisingly, these are very bland and add quite a wonderful bunch of nutrients. Potassium, calcium, manganese, copper, vitamins A, K and B6 in kale and spinach coming in again with potassium, magnesium, folate, and calcium. Now the minerals highlighted in green are your skater's electrolytes. Those are the part of the electrolytes in the human body. So when we all sweat, we're losing our electrolytes. They're body salts. So eating kale and spinach and adding them to the smoothies will help to add back what is lost or at least a portion of what is lost in sweat. Now here's a recipe example. It's kind of similar to the one I make every day. And I'll give you a disclaimer. When you do add kale and spinach, it's gonna change the color. It's not gonna be that like tan color. It's gonna be a little bit more greenish, but one cup of milk, a banana. I do use a quarter cup of peanut butter, a tablespoon of ground flax seeds, and then a mix of kale and spinach. And if you measure this out, you can get close to 27 grams of protein in a smoothie without having to use protein powder. Now, if you choose to use protein powder, that's perfectly okay. But I wanted to do a video for you showing you how you could get a high protein smoothie without using protein powder. To learn more about youth ice hockey nutrition, visit www.hockeymomrd.com. Happy skating till next time. Just get a load of what Coach Chick says about drill design, you know? For almost every drill we coaches use, there is the obvious good, as it's meant to do.
plus a not so obvious negative. And, after that, how about things he sees so often, in social media? The problem, is that a hockey player doesn't get to play in a vacuum. No, everything he or she does on the ice, is usually done amid lots of craziness. And, at some levels like, the one the kid above competes at, there are people out there on the ice trying to hurt you. Then, in contrast to what one hockey guru suggests, about his shooting courses. Hockey goals seldom come, off the sticks of players who are standing prettily, in front of a net. No, there are bad guys all around, and, we might be better off practicing shots while being mauled, while on the seat of our pants, while far off balance, on one skate, and so forth. So, do check out this free post, for much, much more on his observations. Now we have full ice drill, once again zero, starting from the both sides at the same time. Player number three, for, for example, goes forward and he receives a pass. He made a curve here on the blue line. Now he's got a puck, he goes with, with a puck straight on, he plays a pass on the player number one. Now he goes this way and he receives a pass like this. After he received this pass, he goes once again zero, takes a shot. This is the first drill, very easy one for a warm up of the goalies because we have shooting from the left and from the right side. Now we update this drill. Once again zero, we do the second version. The player number one goes straight on and he receives a pass from the player number five. As soon as he received his pass, he goes this way. Now he plays a pass to the player number three and continues this way. Now he receives a pass. He takes a puck, speed up, speed up, and take a shot. After he took a shot, here in the corner are pucks. He goes into the corner, he takes a puck. Now came player number three this way. He received a pass from this player. This player goes in the front of the net for a screen and this player, number three, takes a shot. So we have two shots, four players working at the same time. It's a very great drill. Now we have drill, once again zero plus defender, the blues are defenders, the reds are forwards. This drill is actually for minimum 18 players, we need 8 defenders each corner too. We start with blue defender number 1, he goes with a puck straight on in the front of the net and he plays a puck on the player number 1. The player number 1 received this, this pass, goes into the middle. And he plays a pass on the player number four. As soon as he played, he goes like this. He receives a pass. He goes on the net and he takes a shot. The blue defender is still skating over here. So the, the blue defender played a pass. He's still skating. He's still skating. As soon as this pass is played, the first player stays in the front of the net. So actually we have here this player in the front of the net. Player number four, timing. We want to see timing. This player comes over here and he receives a pass from the defender number two. So he can take a second shot. Defender, this one, 
this one is still skating over here and now we have one player in the front of the net, the, the second shoot at and now defender received a pass from this corner and he takes a third shot so actually very quickly drill a lot of shots not so tough drill very quickly and I think also very useful now we have simple drill once again zero the forward number one plays a pass to the D number one D number one moving to the side and he plays the pass from here to this forward this forward moving into the middle very quickly stored very quickly fits now he plays a pass on the forward number five the forward number five is looking the forward number one is here pass back and now we have situation once again zero against this D so he took a puck and he tries to beat the defender in situation once again zero. This drill is from both sides, heads up, some passes, some shooting and try to play to goal. Of course depends on how many players you have on the ice because if you have 20 it's not so much time or there is the time enough but uh, it takes so much of time to take this drill for our players minimum five or six times. Now we have drill two against one. The defender number one goes behind the net with a puck and he looks for, for a pass and he plays this pass on the player number one. This player number one goes forward like this with a puck. We need timing. We need player number two coming this way. I show it like this. I show it with a blue color. The player number two went this way and as soon as He's got a puck, we need movement over here. Now, the player or forward number one plays a pass. Here is a defender, he's ready to receive a pass. Now, we see both forwards, both forwards crossing over reorganization in neutral zone, and we see them going two against one this way against this defender as soon as as soon as the defender play the pass move me moving he resize a pass shot and now the next situation from the other side so he goes down he resize a pass from this defender and he plays the pass over here and we can go that same way like before This is Dennis Chikasola of Coach Chick. Now, I wonder if you've ever noticed the way top picks are described during the NHL draft each summer. I mean, invariably, scouts and color commentators will say something like, this guy can really, and you fill in the blank. At other times, they'll note that the latest draft pick has some flaws in his game, but he can really and again, you fill in the blank. As a former high school junior and college head coach, I can tell you that the same thing goes on at those levels during the tryouts, and I'll suggest that they also happen through youth levels. You see, 
GMs, scouts, and head coaches are optimistic by nature, and we tend to get excited about a player who can do something at a very high level. If you're wondering where I'm going with this, I feel the need to suggest something that at first might seem a little controversial, while at the same time, I hope it begins making some sense. For, while I think every player should work on his or her shortcomings, I'm going to also suggest that he or she is going to get noticed more by being able to do something at an extremely high level. So, if you're already fast, how about becoming lightning fast? If you can shoot the puck well, how about becoming absolutely frightening to goaltenders? And if you're a hustler, how about bringing your game to the point where you drive opposing teams crazy? Again, don't neglect other parts of your game, but do think about what old Coach Chick has been telling you here. Brenda and Stennis have so much to be thankful for. They have good health. They can smile a lot. The good Lord has kept a roof over their heads. And food on their table. They're thankful for some awesome clients. And at this time of year, great friends are important too. So, here's to a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you and your family. This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.